Hey guys, Rich with Rich Free Builds here, and I know you were wondering where the I-8 is, and currently my assistant, Linda, is working on changing the oil. I don't know why he just doesn't bring things to the dealership, make it so much easier. Just pay somebody to do it, and then you're good to go. And you can go on and eat your chicken and do whatever the heck you want to do. Linda was pretty busy complaining, so I wasn't able to get the I-8 to the track this week for a video. But while the I-8 was down for maintenance, I realized a few things. I kind of want to go back to basics for this next build of a car. All the electronics on modern cars, the i8, the RS7, the Tesla, just cars that are so complicated. And even the Z06, which is pretty analog by today's standards, even that has traction control. Now, I wanted something manual, handles well, and a car you don't see every day, if at all. So after wrestling with going with the Mazda Miata, Subaru BRZ, Alfa Romero 4C, and even an Acura Integra, which will get stolen. Funny story on that, when I went to go see an Acura Integra GSR, the car was stolen before I could even go see it. But in the end, I decided on the Mini Cooper. With the exception of the Memorial 4C, all the other cars you can see on a daily basis, but not a new Mini Cooper, the old school Mini Cooper. Now why an old school Mini Cooper? Well, it's interesting and interest is important because I don't want another impulse buy it doesn't go anywhere because Lord knows I have a few of those sneaking around that I never mentioned. Here are a few examples. I bought an electric smart car for $2,000, drove it, and said to myself, I'm not driving this, and I decided to cut it in half and give the parts to my friend Lee. Then I bought a motorized wheelchair. I bought it to restore, and I was going to give it to a person that needed a wheelchair. Then I realized no one in their right minds, disabled or not, would take a single thing from me. And lastly, the rock crawler. I thought to myself, you know what? I've never seen a black guy in a rock crawler before, ever. And to be fair, I've also never been rock crawling. So I decided to break down the color barrier and buy a rock crawler. I bought one, loved it pulled the engine, and guess what? I lost interest and decided to build the Cyber Quad instead, and it's been sitting at my friend's house for longer than I care to admit. So if you don't know Classic Minis, they're one of the most difficult cars to get accurate pricing for, and they pop up for sale in decent condition often. Here's an example. This guy wants $8,000 for a shell. This guy wants $12,000 for this one, and the other guy wants $20,000 for this one. And even going on eBay, the cheapest ones there are $13,000, going up to 32 and then as high as $80,000. You can literally buy a newer generation Mini Cooper for $400, a car you don't have to use your knees for as a crumple zone. This one's selling for $7,000 and it's not even assembled. You have to assemble it yourself and the car is actively rusting on its own, which they kind of all do. It's literally deteriorating and he wants $8,000 for it. So with prices all over the place, I'll need to learn more about how to save money by haggling or getting what I want and not paying full price, but I don't have lots of time so I'm going to use something called Blinkist. Now, Blinkist has the best insights from over 3,000 nonfiction books and condenses them into 15 minutes. So I'll casually looking through the app for things that may pique my interest. Like, oh, look, I've got this book called Driving While Black, How the Automobile Fundamentally Changed African-American Life. Huh. Well, these books covering various other topics and looking at the size of many of these books in paperback, I just don't have a whole month to read them. But Blinkist is great for that. If you want to read books but don't have enough time to sit down and read, take some time for self-improvement and learn new things and you want to optimize time you can read or listen to them podcast style they have over 14 million active users and the first 100 people to get my link get unlimited access for one week to try it out you'll also get 25 percent off if you want full membership thank you blinkers for sponsoring this episode now fun fact is that every mini owner wants to sell their car but they just don't know it yet my friend josh saw a guy that had a mini cooper on his facebook profile photo messaged the guy and said, are you selling that many? And he's like, no, but yes. And he said, how much would you sell it for? You ready for this? Five grand. Five grand is the cheapest mini I've seen. 5,000 for a piece of history and it's not a shell. And it was made in 1969, which I hear was a great year. And looking at what they go for again, I had to jump on this deal. Needless to say, I teleported to this man as quick as I could. Now here's the fun part. Once I got there, it's listed as a running and driving car. He tries to start it. And it wouldn't, and then he hit me with the, well, it ran when parked line. Now, the dilemma is that I knew I was there with my trailer, so I didn't have much choice. And quite frankly, I knew it was an $8,000 car all day long. So I handed the guy the cash, and I tried to get out of the Dodge. Tried to. You see, the guy that was selling his uncle's car, and his uncle showed up and wasn't happy that the car was being sold for such a low price, if at all. He actually showed up at his Mercedes and blocked me in, which was, in a word, awkward. Now, him and his nephew exchanged a few words, and he asked me, what are you planning on doing with it? I said, orgies. He didn't think it was funny, but thankfully I had already signed the bill of sale and I was much stronger than both of them. So he backed his car away and let me go. And then when I got home, I realized I've never worked on a carbureted car before. I had to push it off the trailer because it wouldn't start. 
and the neighborhood kids had to help me push it around the driveway. So today, we're gonna start the adventure of me showing you what I had to go through to get a 50-year-old car running. Surprise, motherfucker. Check it out. Oh no. You, how'd you pull this away from that, it, dude? Baby. He was so angry. He was angry as hell, but we made it work. Wow. We made it work, baby. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's time. It's time. Right. time. Pay the piper. Pay the piper. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you got that ridge, yeah, baby. Yeah, you, you can have my ridge wallet. Oh, the currency. What you got here? You got Canada, Mexico. You never know where you're going to travel. What's so. this? Is it Me Mexico? What's that? Mexico, Euros, Euros uh, Belize, Costa what the Rica. What the heck is that? You got a little monkey currency yeah, here? Costa Rica, man. Where have you have been? Have you got regular money? Travel. I like that. All right. <laughs> you know what? You keep these. I'm good with this. It's like that real bread. Mm, look at how slim this wallet is. Oh, wow. Very nice. Money clip and everything. I like this. Yeah. This will do. All right. Thanks, man. Yeah, well. <laughs> this is the inside of a modern Mini. As you can see, there's a lot of amenities here. There's a start stop button. There's heating, there's cooling. There's a, there's a large display screen that tells you the vitals of the car, you know, how fast you're going, the radio, etc. And if you look at this too, there's actually probably a good foot of space in between your knees and where the engine actually starts, right? Not only that, but there's a really nice comfortable steering wheel, there's fancy door locks, there's window switches, there's a lot of things on the inside of this car that kind of scream basic but luxurious in a way. Uh, basic meaning there's not that many buttons, but luxurious meaning there's a lot of really nice chrome trim accents on here. And the car is safe, there's an airbag right here. And there's an airbag directly in front of you. There's airbags in the seats. There's a lot of safety measures in this car to make sure that you don't die in a car accident. The seats hold you firmly. You don't feel like you're gonna fall out. There's a six-speed manual transmission. This is an overall what a modern Mini looks like. In the case of an accident, you know, you're safe. Uh, and this is Mini's take on what the classic Minis were. If you look at the doors too on the, on the outside, they're between the edge of the door to the first piece of trim, there's about 10 inches of space from here to here. So the event of a side collision, this is all like a little crumple zone and you actually have some protection before you actually get to the inside of the car. This Mini Cooper is a little bit different, unfortunately. If you look at the inside. Yeah, well, yes. let's edit that part out. On this, on this door. This. Oh, this. <laughs> hey. Look at this. There's like two inches here. Wow. That's literally nothing. Like this does nothing. And this is when you touch this, you could you could literally feel your hands. This is where you put your cassette tapes. <laughs> you can feel your hands on both sides. And look, if you look on the inside too, with the, look at that fuse. It was a light bulb for a minute. This is an old school Mini Cooper. Uh, the seats don't have that much support. And if you look here, look at the distance here. This is considered as the dashboard and this is the glove box on this side. As you can see inside of my glove box, I have a cigar for $9 that came with the car. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take $10 off of the 5,000 I paid for this. This nice. is a $4,900 car, you know? <laughs> Actually, that's 100. So. Yeah. <laughs> great Never math. Mind. Great math. Good quick, job. Quick math, Wow. but not accurate. So this is the crumple zone of the car. And basically, if I were to get into an accident with this car, my foot will be sticking out the bottom and this entire shaft will actually pierce my body, you know, right into the back seat. Yeah, look at this, right? Look how thin this metal is. That's the metal that's holding this car together. If you look at, if you open this window, that slide window, I could literally squeeze both sides of the car and feel <laughs> both metals on the outside, right? Uh, the headliner, uh, there is some staining on the headliner. So from? this car has seen some water intrusion right. at some points uh, throughout its life. And this is the instrumentation. It's just how hot your engine getting, how long you've been driving it for and mileage, how fast you're going. You'll never get here. I don't know why they bought putting 100 there. Never, ever. There's no airbags anywhere in this car, but I will say one thing. Even though it's very small, it's surprisingly roomy on the inside. If you look in the back, there's a ton of room back there. You know, look at that. So much room for activities. Don't, don't mind this. This is this. This is part of the door trim panel. Nice. This nice is door. very wet and moldy, but whatever. It's also in backwards. So nice. I think, actually, no, wait. Very, very nice. Much better. Very nice. But in the back seat, this is actually a pretty large back seat. You could fit two adults back here. I like this. This is a good, this is a good purchase for sure. What is not to like? Oh, you're gonna love this. It's thing. so charming. Look at me in this it's thing. It's so charming. Check, check me out. Check me out. Hey. 
Yeah, there you go. We just need your fedora. So easy. <laughs> <laughs> like the side profile. Honestly. That cigar sticking this. out of your face. <laughs> It'd be like a kingpin. Let's take open the door. Like these are the vents for the car. That's how you get heat in this car. The glue's peeling back already. This entire car is falling apart. <laughs> All right, this battery seen better days for sure. If you can look at the sides, the leads are corroded, but that's normal. But look at the sides, it's like bulging out. So what's the date code? 2012. It's an eight year old battery, so time to go. So I got the new battery, which is awesome. So I have that. Uh, I took the air filter off the carb. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the new battery in and I'm gonna see if it's gonna start on its own. Maybe it was just a battery issue. Maybe that's the carburetor isn't getting any fuel. Uh, I'm gonna try to crank it a couple times to see if it'll fill the bowl with gasoline, but we're gonna see what happens there. If not, there might be an obstruction in the actual fuel line itself, or it could be that the uh, the fuel filter itself is clogged. I'm not really sure where the fuel filter is on this car. It looks like that might be it right there, but I don't really know how clogged it is. But what I could do is I could take out the um, the spark plugs and then I'm going to pull that fuel line off, put it in a bowl, of some sort and to see if it fills up with it with fuel make sure it's actually getting fuel delivery we're gonna see what happens all right new battery is in the weird turn signal is on that's kind of strange so getting some life out of it let's see what we can do here this thing uh huh I do that that works so that's good wait no off okay it's off too. Here goes nothing. Yeah. Shellac. <laughs> you want some free shellac? No. Okay. Okay, so right now I made quite a few discoveries. This is literally just a mess in here that's almost completely black all the way through. As you know, fuel is not supposed to be this black, it's supposed to be nice and clear. So it actually makes sense when we were dumping clean and fresh fuel into the carb, the car would stay running for about 10 to 15 seconds or so, and then all of a sudden it would die. I'm glad I was able to rule out the fact that it wasn't the actual mechanical fuel pump. But what I've learned about this car is that it has a mechanical fuel pump, meaning there's an actual lever that connects to the crank. So whenever the crank spins, it actually it's a pump that goes up and down that pumps the fuel from the tank into the carburetor. So I learned that as well. Now I jacked the rear of the car up, and what I found is, um, geez, it's, it's amazing. There's probably so much just crappy fuel in there. I gotta figure out how to how to get that tank out. You know, what do I wanna do? Do I wanna siphon it out? Do I wanna remove it and clean the whole tank? I'm not really sure, but getting under the car, ah, it's not terrible under here. Definitely not the worst I've seen. Uh, there is some buildup here. It's not heavy rust, but a lot of it is uh, is flaking, but there's no real frame holes or really bad damage. Nothing that can't be resolved. Uh, the braking system was, done over you could tell a lot of this doesn't look like it's really in bad shape matter of fact i think my tacoma looked worse and that was made in 06. this right here a couple of things i do want to address this rubber hose going through the frame i think with enough chafing that actually may uh, eventually put a split in there and that's a fuel line so that's not going to be a good situation at all but this is the fuel line it looks like a couple of pieces were kind of hacked together uh, and it goes from being a rubber tube to metal back to rubber, back to metal again, and it probably makes that transition three or four more times before it actually gets to the carburetor. It's all brown. It's like varnish. Literally brown. Okay, so now that I have the most of the gas out, I'm noticing, look at this. Look at all of those deposits inside the tank. So I definitely have to pull this tank actually take out the level sender and see what's going on inside of it. If there's rust and corrosion buildup, I don't really want that to get contaminated with the new gas either.
see, this is why I have trust issues because they said the car ran when parked, but looking out the pounds and pounds of, uh, of shellac and basically varnish that I'm pulling out of this, look at these clumps of old gasoline I'm pulling out. Uh, I think that this might've been clogging uh, the fuel line and causing a lot of rust buildup in the tank. So, cause gas wasn't allowed to move in and out of the tank properly. And it just creates this, this huge nightmare. So now that I'm pulling it out, the next step I'm gonna do is clean the inside of the tank and get some fresh gas in there. This is already making a huge difference if you look inside of it. A lot of that rust is gone. It's starting to look very, very clean on the inside. Uh, well, not very, very clean, but a lot cleaner than it was before. I'm actually gonna put some vinegar, baking soda, and believe it or not, fish tank rocks for an abrasive to get the rest of the rust and corrosion off the walls of the gas tank. Okay, I put the rest of it in there. No! What do you mean, no? <laughs> give me some, give me some. To eat? No. Okay, are we doing this or not? Yeah. All right, and this is the final product of the gas tank. If you look inside, it's actually really, really clean inside there. It's just no rust whatsoever. I'll tell you that vinegar did a really great job of cleaning out that tank, but it's completely stripped on the inside. I know it's kind of hard to tell. I'll try to get a better angle of it, but look at that. That's just the leftover rust residue. It cleaned a lot of that out. I'm gonna get a small little scraper and get the rest of that out, but if you look at it, Look at that, you could actually see uh, the metal now. Before that was just brown, it was flaking everywhere. And remember, I still have the leftover rust that was in there. Okay, now we should be good to go. Let's uh, start filling up the tank with gas. So it still didn't try to start, but I pulled a spark plug and uh, it looks like there's uh, some water on the spark plug. There's some moisture. So um, yeah, it's likely flooded. Now here's one of the reasons why I'm glad I added this fuel filter, because you could see, look what's happening in there. All the crud, the old crud from the gas tank prior is bubbling up in there. So it looks like even the lines themselves still have remaining rust in that. Isn't that insane? Look at that. And all of that prior to this was going into the combustion chamber. So. This is a very interesting scenario. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much a noob at this and it's very interesting to see how people that have maintained the car before did it, but this thing is just, there's this rust everywhere. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to um, the auto parts store and get a hand pump and hopefully manually pump some of this gasoline out because even though I just put fresh gas in it, it also seems like there's still some left over, whether that be at the at the bottom of the fuel system or some to the pump itself. I'm not really sure, but there's still rust in the system. So I'm gonna get uh, even more gas from my can and I'm gonna get a hand pump from the store. Now, because I found so much rust in the fuel system, I have to pull the carb and clean it. All right, so I pulled the carburetor. Man, there's still a lot of rust and dirt in there too. They say this was rebuilt I don't know if that's true. This doesn't really seem like it's been rebuilt or cleaned. Uh, there's still a lot of gunk and dirt in there. I don't really know what's going on with this car, but this looks uh, pretty uh, precise, <laughs> a little complicated. Uh, what I wanna do is I wanna take the cover off and I wanna check out the actual, what's going on in the bowl in here and this float uh, where the gasoline kind of hangs out. So we're gonna check that out. and I'm gonna take this cover off and see what that's like. All right, so the carb is open, and uh, I gotta say, this does not look like this carb has been cleaned. Uh, they claim that it was. Uh, to me, this looks like it hasn't been cleaned. I don't think that's true in the least bit. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a very basic tightening up. Look at this. It, it wasn't even touching the floor fully. Look at that. Wow, that's amazing. This is shockingly bad, actually. So I'm gonna go with... It, look at that, there's like sludge built up there for I don't even know how long. 
that was there for. But that carb was definitely not cleaned. So I'm gonna take a nice little spray bottle, get this nice and clean, and uh, hopefully that takes care of it. All right, and here's the fuel Dad, filter. Don't, don't, don't let him get the other one. He's gonna steal it. Don't let him. Don't, don't let him. All right, that was kind of weird, but either way, what I have to do now is I have to put these parts in ultrasonic cleaner and get them extra clean before I reinstall them back into the car. All right, so now we're gonna replace this old filter with a new one. I just got this filter a couple days ago, but I realized pretty quickly that you can't actually change this filter. So I thought I was saving a few bucks by uh, getting a cheap one, but in reality, it's not good because I can't replace the filter inside of it. And I didn't get lotion for my ashy hands. These are working man's hands again, but I did get this filter. The filter's replaceable. This costs a couple of bucks more, and this is a lot more slim and streamlined looking. So that should be a pretty decent replacement. Okay, so I started it up and then all of a sudden, I got the leak of death. I was starting to get fuel dripping from the bottom. So at this one point, uh, one part of the fuel system I didn't check, it was the fuel pump itself. And this is a mechanical fuel pump. And what happens is it actually uses the motion of the, uh, the engine crank itself to push this level, little lever back and forth. And it creates a pumping motion to actually suck fuel from the tank to go into the carburetor. And I feel like this is gummed up too. It's one of the few parts I actually didn't check. And it looks like there's some stuff going on there. It looks like it may have torn the diaphragm, but it was just leaking fluid everywhere. So this might be the second thing that I have to run through that cleaner. And I'm gonna take it apart and I'm gonna see what's inside of it. So after doing some research online, I found out that the rebuild kit for this pump is on back order for a month. And the pump itself is also on back order for a month. I can actually see where it's leaking out of the diaphragm right now. The second option is converting to an electronic fuel pump, but I don't think I wanted to jump in that just yet. I'm gonna stick with this mechanical one for a while and see what happens when I install the new one. Here we are, God knows how much longer later, waiting for this thing to come in. I'll tell you right now, even though parts are relatively inexpensive, they take forever to ship. I got this from a company that's stateside, and this part was 100 and $60 with shipping, I think. And then what I did, I actually have a second one that I got from my friend Alex in, uh, in the UK. The guy does a lot of the BMW tuning for me. He got me the same part for $29. So it goes to show you what the markup difference is. And I actually got the part in London quicker than I got this one. Yeah, I, it doesn't make any sense, I don't know. <laughs> so this, <laughs> it's the meaning of this. How do we have extra? <laughs> <laughs> all right this is for the old pump. no no i know i know that but what's uh how do we have all these washers i over? don't know i literally cannot answer this question i can't there are so many people that are just dying right now to share their wealth of information to me like how i'm doing everything wrong oh absolutely trillions of people trillions if not more ah oh, shoot what do you think yay or nay this thing hasn't run in i don't know how long Two, Round fight. Two. Oh, 
bus start right up. Ooh. <laughs> I was not in neutral. Yeah, there you go. Big man, little car. That filter thing pisses me off, dude. God damn it, it's just the extra $3 on a good one. Alright, well, for quick last, yeah. hop in first and we'll... Okay. It's a damn shame you don't have your fedora it's on today. It's a damn shame, man, I know. Should've first, brought it. First drive, baby. Ready for this? Oh, yeah. Is it an actual first gear? Small children. Oh, you're telling me. Oh my god, you look like a clown! I know. Wow. <laughs> Hi, clown. <laughs> I'm already having a good time in this. Yep. Steven. I know. Yeah. I know. We've been waiting for this for a long time. Oh, yeah. What do you think? <laughs> Sunday dryer, man. I could do this for sure. I think this is first. Let's try it. Yeah, that's yeah. first. Okay. How was that pull that's on the second. seat for a second? Yeah, how was that? That's weird. The yeah. third is weird. It's definitely a little go kart. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I can do this. I could definitely oh, do this. Oh, all day. And yeah, we gotta go for a cruise in this thing, Anita. Like, yes. once I register it, like, probably tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. It's about the RVs closed already. I know. Otherwise, we'd be there. Awesome. She doesn't go anywhere in a hurry, but. She'll get there, eventually. Yep, that's for sure. What's up, doggo? That's Jack. Oh, that's, um, wait, who's Jack? Who's Jack? It's very regal. All right, that was a lot smoother. You gotta think, this car hasn't been driven in. Nope. How many years again? We don't know. Completely unknown. I would feel like such an asshole driving this thing and I love every second of it. It's like, who is this guy? Well, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm not 100% sure on what to do with this car yet, but I wanted to get it running to see if I'd even enjoy the driving experience. Not sure if I want to go to electric or do something else crazy or leave it as is. Drop what you think I should do with the car in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe for more mini content. I will see you guys next week.